The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Disciples came to Jesus and asked, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Jesus called a child, whom he put among them, and said, Truly I tell you, unless you change and become like children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever becomes like this child is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. Take care that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I tell you, their angels continually see the face of my Father in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. We are used to hearing in scriptures and many other ways how much God loves us. And we have a wonderful evidence of that again today in our feasting, the superabundance of the Lord's love for us, that he would give each of us an angel, a guardian angel, a special friend sent to him to be by our side our whole lifetime, every second of every day, to protect us, to help us in our own spiritual battles that we fight daily as we rage in battle against the devil, the world, and the flesh. And of course, to help lead us along the way of salvation, to be a helper to us, to get us to heaven, to help us get to heaven. We know the angels are pure spirits. We can't see them. They have no body like ours. They're a different kind of creature than us. In art, we often depict them, of course, to help us understand them. And angels continue to have a hold on popular culture. It's very easy to see them in the stores and people talk about angels. Often they're depicted as cute, fat little children, seemingly harmless. But these are awesome beings, the most perfect creatures of God, second only to the Virgin Mary. And they're powerful warriors who know and grasp the fullness of reality spiritual reality that we in our lifetime only get glimpses of. And they contemplate God face to face, constantly as glorified beings. And they're able to keep their eyes fixed on the Lord God at all times, worshiping Him. And our angels, guardian angels specifically, are able to keep, as it were, one eye towards us too, helping us orient ourselves towards that constant worship of the Lord. We're invited by the scriptures and by the saints to relate to our guardian angels as our best friends. Those who have really grown in holiness and spiritual life often have a sense of the ministry of their own guardian angel and get them to work with them and help them day by day. We're invited to really understand that we're meant to enjoy their friendship and to seek their intercession often. <laughs> we recognize, of course, they are far superior to us, but they are able to help us in ways we could never even imagine. More than any human being could ever help us, than any best friend could ever help us. They're with us at every moment. And they have a capacity to hear and understand us at our deepest depths. And of course, part of the ministry is to console and to illuminate us, to bring us the very grace and the word of God, that we have his help in our daily lives. So we're invited to remember this most intimate and generous friend, that truly, we're never alone. That even if we're lonely sometimes, we're never alone. We have all kinds of graces, and we, of course, have our angels and the Lord to help us. The angels have the capacity to pray with us. As we pray our prayers, the angels unite their prayers to ours and present them to God, especially here at the Mass. And if you're like me, it's one of these gifts of God that we seldom remember and call upon, and yet it's a great gift to us. These angels are so eager to help us on our way. So we pray for the grace this day and every day to constantly call upon our guardian angels that they would help set our hearts on fire with love for God. 